my name is um, Irena Khalupa, Irena Khalupa in Ukrainian, and I was a Fulbright Scholar in 2015, 2016, and a little bit in 2017. My project was twofold. I had spent many years being a broadcaster for an international American broadcaster called Radio for Europe, Radio Liberty. And so in that capacity, I had um, the opportunity to meet a lot of Ukrainian uh, politicians, um, people who were influential in forming uh, political thought and so forth and so on, so on. And amongst them were very, very many former political prisoners, dissidents, who had spent many years behind bars in various um, concentration camps and gulags for their beliefs, uh, whether those beliefs were a free Ukraine, a different type of communism, support of the Ukrainian language and culture. And I had an opportunity to meet many of them. And I wrote a proposal simply to record some of their memories. And I I believe I, rec I recorded 10 of them. They were their lengthy video interviews. And I asked all of them the same question, basically. What propelled you to take a stand in Soviet Ukraine, take a stand in defense of Ukraine, in defense of Ukraine's culture, and so forth and so on. And I was also interested in what their time in the Gulag was like. And um, they were all truly remarkable people. I was very, very moved and very surprised that nobody had even an iota of anger at the Soviet authorities. They were all very philosophical about their experiences. They were so convinced about what they believed in uh, that there was never ever, ever any doubt. And um, it was very interesting to hear how they actually learned a lot of things from other political prisoners in this in that had been there when they arrived, how much they learned about history, and how despite the fact that they were living under absolutely terrible, terrible, terrible conditions, they were free. They felt freer than ever before because they were with people who believed the same things that they did. They were with people who believed in freedom, who believed in liberty. And so I had these lengthy interviews and uh, um, I will probably turn them over to a virtual dissident museum. But I'd like to, I haven't had much of an opportunity to actually work with many of these texts. Uh, they need to be sort of edited, maybe uh, transcribed. And um, while here, also, um, I got involved with a group called Stop Fake. And this is a group that launched in 2014, when the Russians first invaded Ukraine, they launched a fact-checking operation. And I continue to work with these colleagues to this day. This was the very, very first sort of fact-checking, disinformation-fighting uh, program that, um, that anyone had ever done. Today, Everybody is talking about this information from the EU to the United States. Everybody is much more aware of it. But in those days, as the Russians were biting off eastern Ukraine and, and, and annexing Crimea, this group of students and uh, teachers from um, the Kiev Mohila Academy launched this project, which continues to work until today and served as a prototype for very many other fact checking operations. Also, because I had been a broadcaster for a while, the young lady who was the head of the Fulbright office, uh, Marta Kolomiet, who sadly passed away four years ago, she suggested that I try for an extension and talked about uh, the possibility of going to a couple of universities and setting up student radio stations. And that's exactly what I did. I worked for a month in the city of Dnipro at the Honchar University, and then a few months later, I did the same thing in Kharkiv. We worked under very, very sort of Spartan conditions. There were no studios, no nothing, so we would pile up boxes and and to create a kind of a, a sound isolated environment. But within four weeks, um, I was able to teach these very, very talented students the art of crafting a radio story. And as far as I've been told, these radio stations continue to work until today. And I stay in touch with many of the students. And Fulbright for me was just you know, a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful adventure. Uh, I am a Ukrainian-American, so I had been coming to Ukraine for a long time. I knew a lot about it. Um, but I was introduced into a completely different society. Everybody that I met, 
during my uh, time here as a Fulbrighter, just basically fell in love with Ukraine and has continued to have some sort of a relationship with Ukraine all of these years since. So I think Senator Fulbright would be very, very happy at the success his program has here in Ukraine, particularly now in these difficult times of war and so forth. So I thank him for it and um, I suggest and encourage anybody who has an idea, some sort of a project regarding Ukraine or any other country for that matter, because Fulbright is global, right? Um, apply. The worst thing that can happen, they'll say no and then you try again.